Hey, this is David. On this channel, I typically try to go as in-depth as possible to give you the whole picture, but in snapshots, I give you a more casual, laid-back look into some equipment I've used and liked in the past. And so like many other film enthusiasts out there, I'm a big fan of compact film cameras. They often have very high image quality and a lot of convenience that's very difficult to match even in modern times with digital cameras. But compact cameras are not limited to 35mm. In fact, we had older APS cameras or even half-frame 35mm cameras which can get pretty small. But to many film enthusiasts' surprise, there are actually medium format compact cameras, or at least cameras that I would consider compact. Specifically, there are a ton of 6.6 6 and 6.45 folding cameras. There are so many of these cameras made by so many manufacturers, it's impossible to cover all of them or go through all of them. Most of them had uncoated 75 or 80 millimeter lenses at around f3.5 or slower. But today I wanted to talk about one that I think deserves special attention, the Zeiss Icon Super Iconta with an 80 millimeter f2.8 lens. Zeiss did contribute its fair share of these smaller compact folding cameras. Some were 35mm and some were 120 medium format. And an 80mm f2.8 lens is pretty standard when it comes to a medium format interchangeable lens system. But to have that kind of light transmission in a small package like this seems unmatched by any other manufacturer. At least in my research, I couldn't find a camera that had this fast of an aperture in this small of a package that was widely produced and still very much available today. So those are some pretty impressive stats on a unique camera, but how does it actually perform in the real world? Well, one of the biggest strengths of this camera is obviously its size. If you have larger like cargo short pockets or a winter coat pocket, you're gonna easily be able to carry this around without a bag, which really made it a joy to use as a daily walk around camera for a time. And in a similar way, I could really see this being a great travel companion, especially as a complement to a digital camera. The size of the camera and the speed of this lens also made me reach for it more often than other larger and slower medium format cameras that I have. Unlike some other medium format cameras, especially the folders, this Zeiss Icon Super Iconta has strap lugs on the actual body itself, so you can always have this camera ready to go when it's not stowed in your pocket or bag. Another interesting and pretty modern feature of this camera is the somewhat automatic film advance and frame counter, which is actually implemented as a double exposure prevention. I think this kind of functionality makes the Super Iconta more similar to a modern point-and-shoot camera than other cameras of the era. The viewfinder also including a built-in rangefinder is an excellent addition because some of these compact folder cameras don't necessarily have a rangefinder. But unlike modern rangefinders, you don't have frame lines and the whole viewfinder is going to be your frame. This also means there's no parallax correction, so framing isn't an exact science, but more of an estimation. And of course the lens itself I think is the star of the show. 80mm is a great walk around and portrait lens and f2.8 is just fantastic. If you like to use faster film or like to push your film, 2.8 allows you to just barely photograph indoors sometimes or in dimly lit, even some night scenarios if you have street lights. You can really get all kinds of photos with this, which makes it a great walk around camera. You can start during the day and keep on photographing until night. For portraits, that f2.8 aperture renders very classically vintage photographs, but of course you could always stop down a little bit to get more contrasty and sharp images. And although you do have this option to stop down, I think really the strengths of this kind of camera or the reason why you might want to get it is to use it at that f2.8 aperture. The lens also tops out at 400th of a second, which I believe has to be selected before cocking the shutter as a separate option, which is pretty fast for the time, but often isn't going to be fast enough to use f2.8 during the day with faster film. For a vintage camera like this, I was actually pretty impressed with the rangefinder for portraits and other kinds of photography but don't expect it to be like a modern Leica or other rangefinder. But when it comes to street photography, the way that you focus using a wheel on the front of the lens is just too fiddly to really snap focus quickly. For street photography, I tried to step down and use hyperfocal distance. And actually the camera helpfully has a focus scale on the lens with aperture markings. But again, it's not something that you could easily do on the fly because it's located at the front of the camera. So you're gonna have to really take the camera away from your eye, look down at it, set your focus, and get back to photographing, which is not always ideal for street. And if I remember correctly, setting aperture and shutter speed on this camera is also quite fiddly. You have two rings on the front of the lens that you could spin, but getting a good grip on those was difficult. And again, for street photography, trying to change something on the fly might be pretty difficult. That's not to say that you can't use this for street photography, and it is very nice to have this kind of option always with you in your pocket and the f2.8 aperture allows you to photograph in all kinds of different situations, 
I just don't think it's as practical. Your hit rate is not going to be as good as if you use hyperfocal distance. And if that's the case, I think that there are cheaper and smaller alternatives to this camera. But if you're looking for an overall great medium format camera to always have with you, this is one of the fastest and best options I can think of. It's also technically quite good for its time, with a lot of features that photographers would be looking for. It renders images with a classic vintage look that works very well in certain situations, but maybe not in others. And if you think about most high-end 35mm compacts, they also have a maximum f2.8 aperture. So to get a similar amount of light transmission but on a much larger film plane in a similar package is pretty amazing. And I think people have started to catch on to these little gems as prices have steadily risen over the years, especially for ones in good condition. And I think cameras like this Zeiss Icon Super Iconta still have a place in modern day, even though we have digital medium format cameras that are trending towards smaller mirrorless packages, this camera is still much smaller and offers a larger sensor size and sometimes even possibly a faster lens option. So I think still digital hasn't caught up 100% to these smaller, older compact cameras. Of course, a digital medium format camera, a premium compact, and this Zeiss Super Iconta all take very different kinds of photographs and operate in different ways. But personally, lately, I find myself gravitating more towards these compact folding medium format cameras. I just enjoy that experience over the 35mm options, or even some digital compact options. But let me know what you think. Does the Zeiss Super Iconta seem like the ideal compact camera for you, or do you have another dream compact camera? Anyways, I'm David. I'll be back with more videos soon. Thanks.